evening, welcome to We Repair. Uh, so today I'm working on yet another uh, SMX205. This is a uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab A8. Um, this is the 3G model, 4G model, the SIM card trays there. Um, so you will have seen me in a previous video doing a tear down one of these. Um, and as I sort of alluded to on that video, I did it intentionally because I knew I had this coming. Um, so. This one I need to be a little bit more careful with. To give you a, a, a situation in a nutshell, it's it's uh, what's known as FRP locked. Um, so this is where the previous owner has lost the account credentials or it could be nefarious, i.e. stolen, and the account, the, uh, the iPad is locked and can't be used. Now, I bought this from a friend, uh, so I know what the history of it is. They genuinely can't remember their account credentials, and uh, obviously without that information, you're pretty snookered as to what you can do with this tablet. So I asked if I could buy it from them, um, because I knew I had this other tablet that I did a teardown of, and I've got a motherboard. So uh, I wanted to use it to, to salvage this, so it's not going to go completely to waste. Um, now I've already got started because I've heated this device up already, um, so as you can see I'm just working my way around the outside to take the screen out and then we're going to go straight forward with the motherboard replacement. Uh, so it is quite warm already, I do just need to finish heating it. Uh, so in a nutshell I'm going to carry on and get that heated up again and then we're going to get the screen out, we're going to replace the motherboard and hopefully I can salvage that screen and we're going to have a good working, uh, working Samsung at the end of it. So, as I was saying, I'm working my way around the edge of this tablet. It is quite hot now. I'm trying to do this very carefully because of the fact that I don't want to damage the screen. I would like to reuse it. Um, so, I'm trying not to pry too far under the screen. Um, this is quite hot, so I'm trying to be quite careful not to... Uh, I don't think I will burn myself, but... Yeah, I'm just trying to be careful as I go because I do, as I say, want to salvage this as much as I can and try and reuse it. And actually, that came out really, really easy. There's some adhesive stuck here. So we've got to try and get this as clean as we can. I am going to have to clean up the edges of the screen as well before I put it back in. Just trying to see what's holding on to it. So there we go. Much as you saw in the last video, it's quite quick and easy to undo here. So, so I got a horrible reflection of my light there in the screen. So just one screw and then we can take this away and disconnect our battery first and then disconnect our screen. So I, as I say, I'm gonna try and reuse as much as I can because the old screen, as you saw, was smashed to bits. There is a bit of adhesive on the back here, but to be honest with you, overall, it's not too bad. Most of it came away quite cleanly. So let's just try and clean this up and then we can reuse it, which is definitely what we want to do. So I've been quite careful not to pry too far under because I don't want to damage the digitizer or the LCD. So hopefully I've been successful in that. So there we go. That is all cleaned up now. So we can hopefully reuse that screen with no problem at all. So let's just pop it off to one side. So next thing we'll do is we'll just give this a bit of a clean up as well. I want a nice clean frame to work from so that when I reseal this, we've not got any adhesive in our way. Needless to say, you need to be quite careful around the sensors and things, cameras, sensors, that sort of stuff. So as you do this tidy up, just be careful not to knock any of the more sensitive electronics. That is a flex cable just there, so I'm just going to stop using my blade whilst I do that bit. Because the last thing you want is any crap on this frame when you're trying to reseal it, because it's it's just not going to hold very well. The more you can get off, the better. This is exactly the same process you would do if you were in a 
if you're working on an iPad, clean the frame up as much as you, you could before you reseal the screen, otherwise it's, it'll just come loose. And again, obviously I'm using a sharp blade around a battery here, so if it slips, I'm liable to damage the battery, which is also the other reason I kept the, uh, <laughs> the battery out of the, the broken teardown tab that I did the other day, just in, just in case. Hopefully I'm not gonna do that, but you never know, these things do happen. And uh, I got plenty of other spare parts as well to repair if I need them. So getting there now, just this last little edge, and then we can actually start taking it apart. There we go. So that's nice and clean, I'm happy with that now. So that's ready for the next stage if we need to go that way. So if you remember from our teardown video, the first thing we need to do is get these speakers out. Um, now I do have a little magnetic mat. That I'll just put to the top of my screen here so I can keep all of my screws in the order that they came out. They are all the same size, so you can't really mess this up but I still like to keep them all in the same order anyway, just to be on the safe side. It gives me a little map of where they need to go back as well. I don't want to come out. And then after we take this piece out, the speaker is quite well fixed down. So we need quite a bit of force to lift the speaker out of the device. It's just such a shame, if it didn't have a Google account locked to it, the previous owner would have been able to keep this and actually use it, but unfortunately they were a bit blasé when they set the account up, so <laughs> they've lost the details. There we go. If you see what I mean, there's quite a lot of force required there. I don't know how much force it's going to take to get that back in as well, which could be a problem. I have taken out all the screws, as you saw, but it's just really, really difficult to release that speaker. So that's our first one. Next one we're going to do is this one up here. And again, these million or so screws just need to come out. So that's all done. Let's check I haven't missed any screws. I haven't. So the place I pried last time was here. And that seemed to do the job. There you go. Once you've got that going, then you can do that. <laughs> but hopefully less spectacularly than I did. So I'm going to disconnect this flex. And we'll just pull that up and out the way a little bit. And then the last things we need to do is just these screws along the top here. And we've got one more bit of plastic to remove from the device to free that board. The board itself comes out relatively easily. I was quite surprised at how easy it was to remove. So that's that done. And this bit of plastic just comes out, he says. There we go. Okay, so I will take the camera out first. Okay. I reckon I can get away without removing that other camera and it'll probably lift out with the board. There you go. So that's our motherboard out. Uh, I will, I'm gonna probably use the camera from the other one just because my only concern is if it's paired. I don't think it is, but you know lot Samsung are like, they like to pair stuff up a bit like Apple do, so. That's that done, and I might even use the front-facing one from the other device as well, just as a safety net. Oops. So that's in. Just making sure everything's lined up. It is, all the little blobs and locating pins are in the same, in the right places. So that's good, that's all stuck down. Let's grab the front-facing camera again from the other one. Stick that back in there. Oops, so that's in. And then really at this point, we're just gonna do the reverse of what we've already done. So this is the 
the other bit of the voyage of discovery that I've not done before. So getting this back in, hopefully is really easy, but you never know how tricky it's gonna be. The bit I, I'm a little bit concerned over is how hard I'm gonna to have to push uh, to get the speakers in place. So let's just fix this in and then we can, uh, we can discover that together. It doesn't feel like it's down enough, but I think it is. Yeah, that is. So we're rattling through this pretty quickly. We're about 10 minutes in so far, including the disassembly, so that's pretty good. So I reconnect that flex. Okie dokie, moment of truth, people. So, just make sure we get this up the right way. Yeah, that's definitely the right way up. How hard do we reckon we have to push? As it transpires, not hard at all. Wow, that went in very easily. Okay, well, I guess that's a bit of a Brucey bonus for us. I didn't think it was gonna go in that easy. So now we've got to screw back in the million or so screws that's holding the speaker in place. Right, that's our tablet prepped, that's good. Put that out of the way. So that's all done and prepared. Let's just pop this off to one side. Now we need to prepare our screen. So, I've talked about this many times before. I use something called Stix Tape, uh, S-T-I-X or Stix 2. Um, and, if, and this is Ultrasong double-sided sticky tape. Uh, and if you heat it up, it gets even stickier. So this is what I tend to use to seal my screens in. Only thing to be aware of on this screen, uh, just here, the little holes for the sensors and the camera, and just here on this side as well for the other sensors. So we're just gonna make sure we don't tape over those, uh, and otherwise we are all good just to tape our way around. So I will just very rapidly do the whole screen and then we can reinstall and hopefully, with a bit of luck, we've managed to wangle this iPad into a working state. Otherwise, I suspect the only thing that I will have done is damage the screen. <laughs> so, fingers crossed we didn't do that. That's our finished screen, so now I'm just gonna get this reinstalled carefully. This is the tricky bit. I'm gonna turn it around this way so I can actually see it as well. This is the bit I couldn't do last time whilst I was trying to do it upside down. Oh, there we go. Look at that straight in. What oh, boss. Right. Tricky bit time. Oh. What are we forgetting, kids? We haven't put the bracket in to hold everything in place. And we also need to put it up the right way. <laughs> okay. Cool. Straight into position. Right. Take two. So we'll make sure we've got everything nicely lined up. And again, we'll work our way all the way around, same as we did last time, and just see the image of it. Okay, so what do we reckon? Do we think this is gonna work? Moment of truth. The lights are on. Is anyone home? That's the question. I 
think we are good. There is no activation lock on it, so that is brilliant. That is our tablet repaired. So I'm sure there are other non-friendly ways of getting around it, but that is one of the few ways you get around a Google FRP lock uh, without somehow hacking the device or routing it or going in through some slightly dodgy means. That's one of the few ways is just to replace the motherboard. But there we go. So hopefully that has helped you with a little bit of knowledge how to do a motherboard replace. If it has, please drop me a like, leave me a comment, give me some love. Uh, I'm trying to, uh, to keep the channel going this year. I've challenged myself to try and do 52 videos this year, which is one for every week of the year. So if it, if it has helped you, please just drop me a thank you because it's really great to know that it's benefiting someone uh, and I'm, I'm helping the wider community. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video.